drag him back into the house. You dutifully slather his exposed body parts with sunscreen. Mom, this is taking too long. Alex is coming over from next door and I want to go play. Nervously, you nibble the top of your non purel hands and you try to remember what you've forgotten. Your hat, you yell as you run down the hall and fetch a baseball hat to shield his eyes from the evil rays of the sun. He heads outside with you close behind. You start to wonder if because it's really warm out, the mosquitoes have come out yet. In fact, you blurt out and look, notice that after it's after 4 p.m. Now is the time of day when the mosquitoes are at their worst. Your brain flips through your mental flashcards onto which you've recorded the dates of your kids' next pediatric appointments, your wedding anniversary, details of the last episode of 24, and foggy memories of the days when you were free and unencumbered and didn't worry about things like sunscreen. After about 30 seconds, you arrive at the mental flashcard you made last summer while reading a scary news article about West Nile virus. I can't let you go outside without deep bug spray, you tell your kid, who now feels like he's aged three years waiting to go outside to play. <laughs> Do you want to get West Nile, you snarl at him as you spray the bug spray on top of the sunscreen. Hearing the soft gurgling sounds emanating from your baby monitor, you clip to your jeans, take a mental note that if your baby wakes up, you can't take him outside without grabbing that African safari like netting to cover his baby seat because the experts say that he's too young for sunscreen and for bug spray. Your sweet infant, you think, would be better off in a hermetically sealed, germ-free, but intellectually stimulating black, white, and red striped environment where an endless loop of baby Mozart DVDs are playing. And since I wrote this, now baby Mozart is bad. It's going to make your kids stupid. But whereas, at this time, it was supposed to make your kids smart. Mom, are you done with the spray? Your big kid asks, snapping you back into the present tense. Yeah, you reply, suddenly, silently praying that your baby won't wake up. As you stand up, you notice his clothes. Nothing but a dark, short-sleeved t-shirt and shorts. That's not good according to the West Nile virus people. You gotta get him in light clothes, light colors, long sleeves, long pants to protect him from the bugs. Change your clothes. You can't wear that. The bugs will get you. But then it'll be hot and sweaty, he complains. You're right. Your mental flashcards don't worry again. Stop him when you come to the heat stroke. You could overheat with all the clothes like that. Uncertain of what to do, you pause, trying to recall with the health experts who prattled on and on while being interviewed for TV news segments, especially during the sweeps period, when all the ominously menacing segments air on the local newscasts, warning that they have the answers to whether your child will live or die if you tune in at 11. And if you don't let your kid go outside and play, he's just going to get fat from the lack of exercise. And if you if he goes outside, he'll get exercise, which is good. But you need to keep him away from the abductors. That would be bad. He needs sunscreen to keep skin cancer at bay and bug spray to keep the West Nile virus away. Long sleeve shirt, long pants to keep cancer and West Nile virus at bay, and a bottle of spring water to prevent heat stroke and dehydration, but not tap water unless it's been tested for contaminants by qualified environmental experts. <laughs> you finally decide to live on the wild side and let him play outside for 15 minutes, maybe 20 until it's officially too buttony. You pat him on the head and march him outside and keep your vigil from the deck. Your frazzled brain is just starting to ratchet down from pediatric safety mania when it's time to go inside and have a snack and face another rash of seemingly contradictory pe pediatric expert advice. Once inside and everyone's washed his hands in antibacterial soap, which now everyone's saying is bad because then super viruses arise, you announce that your kids can only dine on certified organic fruit, but not too much fruit because you don't want them to have too much sugar, even if it's natural sugar. The baby who's just waking up can eat as much of, of his orga organic baby crackers as he wants, as long as the crackers don't contain hydrogenated fat, which the nutritionists say is bad. Do those crackers have hydrogenated fat or trans fat, you wonder aloud, suddenly panicking, rushing to reread the ingredient list. But wait, he needs some fat for his brain development. What kind of fat? I, I don't remember. Just then your seven-year-old reaches for the whole milk in another organic, non-hydrogenated cookie. You scream no and scratch and snatch the cookie and the whole milk from him. Instead, hand him a cup of organic 1% fat milk. You're not supposed to have too much fat in the milk and no more cookies. You need to save room for tonight's tofu vegetable stir-fry surprise. He frowns and so do you because deep down you don't want anything with tofu. You want an all-American anything. You place a single unsanitized finger in front of your mouth. You motion to your grade schooler to be quiet as you take two forbidden pieces of chocolate from your secret stash in the pantry. Just don't tell the other mommies, you whisper to him, while you and your son enjoy the moment and what's left of his so-called carefree child. 